And today I want to talk about magnesium and magnesium supplementation because it's been so popular um, and in the news quite a bit. So let's dive right in and talk about the role of magnesium and what it does for our bodies. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who have not watched the show or are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I am a board certified pediatrician and mom myself. So magnesium is actually the fourth most abundant nutrient found in our bodies. Um, which just speaks to the diverse role that it plays for us um, physiologically. So magnesium helps our muscles relax. It also helps our muscles contract. It is important for mineral building like bones and teeth. Um, And it's also a really crucial neurotransmitter for our brain. So what does that mean? Magnesium helps do things for us like allows our vasculature to relax, which helps our blood pump, um, our heart pump and fill. Um, It helps our brain send messages to each other, so it can be helpful um, in helping promote sleep and mitigate stress. It also helps us build our enamel, our teeth, as well as our bones, Um, and it plays a large role in our bowels contractions. It helps us go to the bathroom. That's just a few kind of important roles that magnesium plays, but there is a much longer list of it which is why I think it's become such a um, talked about and um, popularized supplement in both the pediatric and adult market. So true magnesium deficiency is extremely rare, and it's usually found in people who have other underlying conditions, like either those who have renal impairment, um, magnesium is reabsorbed by our kidneys. So if you have a problem with your kidneys, you may have a magnesium problem. Children who are severely burned can have issues with magnesium, or those with um, malabsorptive gut disorders might have a magnesium deficiency. Outside of that, true magnesium deficiencies are extremely rare. Although children are eating more and more processed foods, again, the most lately statistics shows that about anywhere from 50 to 80% of our children's diets come from ultra-processed foods, um, they are still seeming to meet their magnesium requirements. Although again, I think that this is a time to talk about the importance of whole foods because that is mostly where we get our magnesium sources. In an ideal environment, we are consuming and getting our magnesium through our diet. And that is because our gut and our kidneys help us regulate how much magnesium comes into our body and how much comes out. Great sources of magnesium tend to be things like dark leafy green vegetables, nuts, legumes, cold water fish like halibut or salmon. And you might say, Dr. Will, like my toddler doesn't eat um, any of these things. And so I'm really concerned about the amount of magnesium that they're getting. Um, and I think that if your child, if you have a particularly picky or selective eater or your child has a kidney or malabsorptive disorder, it might be a time to talk about checking magnesium with your physician. I would argue for checking a magnesium first before starting supplementation for a few reasons. One, um, magnesium is ultimately a a medication, even though it's over the counter and available as a supplement. It has side effects like nausea, um, vomiting, and diarrhea very commonly. Uh, And in high amounts, it can cause um, low blood pressure and even coma. So uh, especially, again, if you have a child who has a kidney function disorder, I would not recommend starting magnesium with, without, um, without the input from your pediatrician or physician. And I think that kind of lends itself to talking a little bit about what are some of the uses of magnesium, um, what it, has magnesium been studied for, and um, who should be on magnesium. So the, let's talk first about the historical use of magnesium or the most well-studied, and that is really in constipation. So there are different types of magnesium available. Um, There's magnesium oxide, which is most commonly found as an over-the-counter supplement. Um, There's magnesium hydroxide, which we'll talk about. That's the one we use in constipation as well as heartburn. It's also called milk of magnesia. Um, And there's magnesium sulfate, which is the intravenous form that we use to treat 
um, children in the hospital who have, for example, maybe really bad asthma, and we're using it to have some smooth muscle relaxation in the lungs. I think that goes beyond the topic of today's discussion. So let's again talk a little bit about the different uses for magnesium supplementation and who you're, who I might recommend um, go on it. So the first one, again, is constipation. Um, one of the side effects of magnesium is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. It does cause water to, especially magnesium hydroxide. Um, it's actually the hydroxide that's working, but it causes water to um, be pulled into the large bowel, um, which helps make stools looser and easier to pass. It's a highly effective medication at treating constipation, but isn't usually my first choice because of the side effects of nausea and vomiting, as well as it um, tastes particularly horrible and you need really large volumes of this medication for it to be effective versus some of the other medications that we have available to treat constipation are more palatable and require less volume. And so this would not be my first choice in any event. So in a previous video, we did talk about magnesium and its role in treating migraines. And this is one area where magnesium has been shown to be a potentially helpful therapy um, in either preventing or treating migraines. So depending on the patient's um, weight and size, I will sometimes recommend magnesium supplementation for those with migraines. Um, and if it's helpful and they're not having the side effects of um, nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting, um, then I say, great, let's continue it. But after trial, if it's not helping their migraines or if they are having side effects like nausea and vomiting, I usually don't recommend that we continue um, with magnesium supplementation for migraine treatment. Another area where magnesium is kind of being explored as a therapeutic agent is in ADHD and autism. The evidence for its use in these two um, specific areas is still very limited and there are not strong or robust trials indicating its benefit. Um, and so again, I usually recommend that parents do not start magnesium supplementation for these issues, but if they are going to start it, um, that they do so with their physician so that they have the appropriate dose. Um, and that if their child is experiencing any side effects, um, to stop the medication. So another area that is making kind of big news is the use of magnesium in sleep. The evidence for magnesium uh, in helping sleep-related disturbances and behavioral sleep problems is extremely limited, um, and it has not really been shown to be helpful in sleep. Because of the side effect profile, it's not usually the first recommendation that I make. However, if a parent really wants to try magnesium supplementation for this indication, I recommend that they choose a brand that is USP certified so that at least it's meeting the standards of um, a pharmacologic medication, which it is. And then kind of the last important caveat that I really want parents to be aware of um, is it is really important to disclose to your physician if your child is on a magnesium supplement, especially if your doctor is treating them with antibiotics for an infection. Magnesium interacts with a lot of antibiotics and renders them actually less effective. Um, and so it has to be dosed at a certain time interval away from the antibiotic. Um, and so depending on the antibiotics, dosing, if it's every day, twice a day, three or four times a day, it is really important to work out those details with your pediatrician ahead of time and make them aware of the fact that your child is taking the supplement because it may affect the effectiveness of the antibiotic they choose. And so I just want to close out by saying that if you suspect your child has a magnesium deficiency, either because um, they're a very selective or picky eater or they exhibit some of the symptoms of, um, or they have a malabsorptive disorder, or they exhibit some of the symptoms of magnesium deficiency, and or if you're just thinking about trying magnesium supplementation for some of the indications we talked about, that you reach out to your doctor and you do so in conjunction with them so you make sure, one, that they're taking the proper weight-based dose, and two, so if they're going to prescribe them any medications, they make sure that they don't interact with magnesium. So overall, I hope you find this episode useful. If your child is on magnesium and you've had a good outcome or you've, your child's on magnesium and you've had potentially not the best outcome, I'd love to hear from you and hear your experiences with um, magnesium in, in your children. And if you have any questions or concerns, i um, love to hear back from you guys. Please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts.
This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.